Stage one of any script is, especially television series script, is just what's it going to be about this week? What's the, what's, what's the sort of one line idea that it's going to be? That sounds like I'm pitching, but I'm not pitching. I don't have to pitch the idea. It's just you make it clear in your head. This is the one where. What's funny about it? The, and you know, that wonderful friends thing of just saying the one where. Like the, the man with two legs is the one where Jeff lies about having a wooden leg. What then happens and taking that on. So that's at the very first stage you, is you, you, you frankly, you stare out the window until you make yourself laugh. If it's a comedy, you stare out the window and you make yourself laugh. And then you, you kind of work out, broadly speaking, how that's going to develop. And at a certain point, as late as possible, because it's a hideous process, you actually sit down and actually write it, actually start. And that's usually pretty horrific. Because, you know, what was such a wonderful, glorious, uh, laughter-filled, sunlit thing in your head, you actually have to sit and hammer out in, you know, word after word. And it's really, especially in the first few pages, really bleak and seems terribly unfunny. But you, you make your tortured way through that script. And it can be, uh, uh, my, my length of script writing has varied radically from a, from a week to three months. Uh, it can be... It can be very that, that part is that is the real the the, the real hard bit. Uh, the trouble with a comedy is that it's, it's it's one of the hardest things to write, if not the hardest thing to write. I think I probably still think it's the hardest thing to write because it has one specific aim. It's not going to r- redeem the world. It's not going to teach anyone anything. It's not going to seem like a great act of wisdom. It's just got to make people laugh. And if it doesn't make people laugh, it hasn't succeeded. Who the hell knows what a drama is supposed to do? You're supposed to watch it while your feet are warm or something. That's easy. But actually, a comedy's got to make you laugh several times a minute. And that's really hard. So the really most... The, the, the next stage, which is almost as ghastly, uh, is, is handing it to somebody else to see if it is in any way funny. Now, in my case, because the, the producer of a couple things, my wife, uh, and we live in the same house, I wouldn't be posting the script. I wouldn't be emailing the script. I'd be handing the script over that evening. And what I'd have to do is hand the script to her and go away, uh, go two floors away, go um, make, make sure that it make, makes my house sound huge, doesn't it? Go the only two floors we have away from her um, so that I couldn't hear if she laughed or not. Because, you know, it's really, really hard to read something in a relaxed frame of mind if the writer is sitting next to you saying, you turned a page and you didn't laugh. What was wrong? What was wrong with that page? Why didn't you find that funny? Is that not funny? That is funny. Go back and read it again, see if you laugh this time. That's what you don't want. Uh, and I know that um, I'm a nightmare uh, to deal with in, in terms of handing scripts over. Uh, so that's the next stage. And Sue will then uh, go through it. And actually, really, because again, comedy, it's kind of, it's kind of strict. It's almost kind of mechanical in a way. Uh, certain aspects of it are anyway. Sue would always uh, award ticks. You know, three ticks for a big laugh, two for a medium laugh, one for a laugh. Uh, so she'd actually mark the script like an exam. So she'd always have in her mind how funny it was or wasn't. And at some point, I'd find that script and I'd be going through saying, so you didn't put a tick at that line, that line's funny, it's going to be hell. Um, and that would be, uh, she'd, always keep, she'd always keep hold of that original reaction so that throughout the process so that we could uh, remember what was supposed to be funny, what was once funny. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, the read-through. The read-through is a really quite important stage for a comedy script. Most read-throughs aren't, I think, that big a deal. Uh, on Doctor Who, I don't think we read through. We try and have a good day, but I don't think it's that important. But on a comedy, people better be laughing. I mean, it's a pretty good measure of uh, how funny the script is, is do people laugh at the read through? Just the, just the cast and crew, will they laugh? So that'd be a big day for me, would be the read through day. And if something absolutely plummeted on that day, I'd be, I'd be worried. Generally speaking, it didn't. But from time to time, there's times I've called a taxi and gone straight home and rewritten a scene because it just wasn't funny. Um, but that's, that's, that's a really, really important day. Um, in terms of, and then, you know, you, again, you'd sort of remember what got laughs then because through the process of rehearsal, you lose faith in everything and start gaining faith in jokes that aren't funny at all. You start noticing something that you didn't notice the first two or three times round, but you notice it the fourth time round and you start, you start to think that's the whole point of the scene guaranteed the studio audience won't even notice it. The home audience won't even notice it. But you will, you, you live and die by these moments. Then there's the night of the show, uh, which is incredibly exciting. That's the one of the great advantages that sitcom has over any other form of making television. There's actually a night. There's a big golden special night with an audience coming in and you look at the audience and think, oh, they look grumpy this week. Uh, and, you, and you get nervous and excited and you, and, you, and you live and die by whether or not they laugh. 
uh, and that can, be, that can be a horrible experience, it can be a, a wonderful experience, and you, 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 know, you actually you, you live it second by second in a way that you do not live any other form of filmmaking, television programme making. You're absolutely excited and riveted on that night. I would be terrified. I'd have to have one glass of wine before I go into the gallery. If I had two, I'd start shouting abuse at the cameras, and that wasn't good. Uh, if I had one, I was fine. I think the time I had two glasses of wine, I shouted, sack that actress, because she fluffed up line. So I never did that again. Um, and again, you think that's what's really, really important. You think, well, the studio audience liked it. And you, and you live and die by that. And you're wrong. That's not important. The studio audience is 200 people who are bust in to laugh at your show. That doesn't mean anything. One of the shows we did on Coupling that died a death in front of the studio audience was a show called The Girl with Two Breasts, which was uh, one about a, which had a sort of language gimmick, uh, a girl who could only speak Hebrew improbably enough, um, and it died on the night. You know, the, the audience were fleeing in droves. We had to buy the, uh, the, the stand-up comedian who was doing our, uh, our warm-up you know, extra drinks because he was shaking. You know, it was such a, a dreadful night. And, we, told, and, we, and we, we were so convinced it was a bad show, we moved it later in the, the run. Uh, we told our friends, oh, it's not very good this week. It was, of course, the show that put us on the map. It was when watched at home, a really clever, funny show. Watched on the night, it was quite a lot of Hebrew. So uh, the process, that process, that writing process, the process of sweating and worrying about all those jokes sort of never ends.